Today, uh, I'd like to speak briefly on the subject that we're talking about for a few weeks, the family. Our text today is Ephesians chapter 5, if you would like to turn in your Bibles. We will read verses 21 through 24. Ephesians 5, 21 through 24. In honor to the word of God, will you please stand as we read. 21, 521, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we pray that you will give us meaning from these verses and others that we will share this morning. And Bless us as we continue this series on the family throughout the weeks ahead. Thank you again for Barbara and for her ministry and for the fact that there's a vibrant church in Manchester where the gospel is so scarce. But we are praying, Lord, that you will bring out revival there and here as well. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We continue our series today on the family and we're basically talking about some foundational aspects of the family. There are three words I'd like to have us think about today. The first is the word submission, and then servanthood, and then finally strength. We read in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. We see a lot of confusion and chaos in our world today. It's in every country, it's in every city, but God is not the author of confusion or chaos, but of peace. And it says, especially in the churches, God wants everything to be done decently and in order. He has an orderly way about him. Everything that God does is perfect. We read in verse 40 of chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians, let all things be done decently and in order. God is not pleased with confusion. God is not pleased with chaos. He has established an order for stability in human relationships. And we have a responsibility as believers in Jesus Christ to follow God's plan for order and for stability. The family is established with a pattern of order. It starts in the book of Genesis, and even before the family came about, God had an order in his trinity. So we want to talk about the word submission, first of all. That's the first priority. Before he created the family, there was the trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is what we read in 1 Corinthians 11:3. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ, the head of the woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Now, sometimes you men, when you read that phrase, so the head of the woman is man, you say, all right, men, this is it. But there's a bigger picture. There's a mutual submission to one another. As we read in Ephesians chapter 4, or chapter 5, rather, verse 21, we are to submit to one another in the fear of God. Everyone is to submit to everyone else in the body of Christ. And there are functions that are different, but there's an equality of people. Everyone is equal to everyone else in the body of Christ. It's interesting that God should ex express the fact that there is even a, an order of function in the Trinity. It says that God is the head, Christ is also the savior of the body. Christ is the head of the church. What does it mean when it says that God is the head of Christ? Does it mean that God is more important, the Father is more important than the Son? No, they are equal. There are so many verses in the Bible that talk about the equality of the Father and the Son. Jesus himself said in John 10, 30, I and the Father are one. John 14, 9, he who has seen me has seen the Father. And as uh, Barbara read today in Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, all power, all authority is given to me in heaven and on earth. 
That means that the Lord Jesus Christ is over everything else, along with the Father. But in function, there is a headship, a leadership, the Father and the Son. And this is what happens in all of relationships in the body of Christ. There are those who functionally are to lead and those who are to follow. So, but there's a mutual submission, a mutual submission of one to another. And so we have the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're all equal, but there is a functional difference. The Father is the leader, and then the Son is the Savior. He is the Redeemer. He is the one who came to give his life for us. Die on the cross that we might have eternal life. And as Barbara said 21 years ago, she committed her life to Christ as her personal Lord and Savior. And so we do that while in essence and in nature, they are all equal. There is a submission of one to another. Now, this is a different submission than we find in some of the religions of the world. For example, Islam talks about one of their key words is submission. You must submit to Allah. But their submission is out of force and it's out of uh, fear. Our submission to the Lord is out of love. And we volunteer, volunteer our submission, just as Jesus volunteered. He said he came to do the will of the Father, but he did so willingly. He left heaven to come to do the will of the Father. And even though there were times when he questioned the will of the Father as a human being, he still carried out the Father's will. You remember that prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was about to go to Calvary. He said, Father, if it be possible, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. He was willing to submit to the Father's will and willing to do exactly what God had sent him to do, to die on the cross for us. And we thank the Lord for his submission. It was his example to us. So God the Father's design is that we should be blessed as we submit to one another. Just as Jesus submitted, John 6, 38 says, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And everyone, as we said, is to submit to one another in the body of Christ. Even if God has given us a position of leadership, we are to submit to one another. And there are areas of submission that everyone has. And we do this in love. Ephesians 5, as we have read, says, Wives, submit to your own husbands, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is also the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Christ is the head of the church, but he is submitted to die on the cross to save us from our sins. We are to have leadership roles, but also submissive roles. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, goes on to say, so let the wives be subject to their husbands and everything. And we're going to be talking more about the roles of wives and husbands in the days ahead. But to submit to one another... To me, one of the very best words describing submission is the word, yes, yes, I will do it. And when the Lord calls us to do something in the body of Christ, to serve him, or when we are called in the family to do something, what a good word it is to say yes. Now, some of you have had to deal with children or grandchildren, which we have over the years. And sometimes we will say, would you help me with such and such? And we may feel a little hesitation, or they may say, well, can I do it later? And they may forget about it. And that sometimes happens, but what a great word it is when we say, hear the word, yes, yes, I will, right now, I'll help you, right now. And that's what God is asking us to do. Submission is to say, yes, yes, Lord, I will do it. The second word is the word servanthood. We said that every believer is equal to every other believer. And as believers in the body of Christ, we are called to serve one another. Jesus set the example, didn't he? It says in Mark 10, 45, For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. That's very important because Jesus so often showed the example of servanthood. You remember him washing the disciples' feet the very night before he was to be betrayed and go to Calvary. He washed the disciples' feet. He said, I have done this as an example for you that you should also serve one another. He wasn't asking that they serve him, but serve other believers. 
We read in the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, There is neither Greek nor Jew, neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So no matter what our title is, we are one. We are to serve one another in the body of Christ. Galatians 5.13, which Randy read this morning, Through love serve one another. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do we do that? Do we think of others as actually more important than ourselves? Jesus said this. Sometimes we think of this old expression, we are to look out for old number one. What does that mean? Take care of yourself. Make sure your own needs are met first. That's not what the Bible says, does it? The Bible says, look out for others first, and God will take care of you along the way. And some people in the world today are actually giving their lives, dying to serve others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are to have a servant's heart. How good it is to hear when people volunteer. Think of a beehive. We have all those volunteer bees, and they're all busy serving one another. And God wants us to be a beehive. The third word is strength. We've talked about submission, servanthood, and strength. There will be storms in our lives as we are serving the Lord. And God has acknowledged that. There will be challenges, things we will go through. There might be times of discouragement, times of even health failures. But through all of it, God wants us to be strong in him, and he gives us strength. God's order provides strength for his people. What does it say in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10? Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It's not depending on ourselves, it's on Christ. All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth, Jesus said. And in him, all the fullness of the deity, the Godhead, dwells in physical form, Colossians 2.9. So how do we show strength? We show strength by trusting God. That's one of the things that Barbara has shared with us. She's had to trust the Lord to all kinds of new experiences that she's never had before. And that's what life is, trusting God, walking with him. In our daily lives, in our long-range future, what is God's vision for us? Trust me, I will take care of you. Continue in my word, and I will direct your paths on a regular basis, day by day. Strength also comes from each other in the body of Christ. We read in Romans chapter 12, verse 10, Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. That means be willing to defer to one another care for one another. And as we do that, strength will come into our hearts. God himself will provide his own strength. Philippians 4.13, don't we love that verse? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's through Christ, not on our own. So leaders need to serve. Servants need to serve. Everyone needs to serve one another. God has said he is not an author of confusion, but of peace. And God's order is that there should be submission, that there should be servanthood, and that there should be strength that he would provide for us. And God never makes a promise without keeping that promise. He just wants to give us the opportunity to say, Lord, let me prove you, and he will prove true to us in every way. One of the subjects we're talking about, we'll be singing about in our last song today, is peace. This is uh, an example that I've told you before, but it came to my mind this week as I was thinking about this subject. There was a, a contest of artists who were given the opportunity to draw a portrait of peace as they pictured it, and there would be a prize for the winning picture or portrait. 
And so there were a number of different scenes, scenes of uh, beautiful calm waters by a lake and all kinds of pictures of serenity. And there was one artist who drew, drew the picture of a violent storm. And in that storm, there was a, a rock, a rock cliff. And in the cleft of a rock was a little bird's nest with a mother bird sitting in that nest and a little baby birds in there. And they were calm. There was no storm for them. And he won the contest because he pictured a storm, but there was peace. And that's the way it is in our lives. There's a storm everywhere, but not in a, our hearts, because God has given us peace, isn't he? Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. So God's order is for us to have peace. He wants us to trust in him, to walk with him. Just this morning, I was talking to Cora, and she told me about, Cora, could, could you come up here for a second? Could you come up here? Cora is Brenda's mom. And I didn't know this about you before, but something happened to you when you were four years old. Can you yes. tell us what happened? A miracle, really. Yes. I uh, was four years old, and I, we used to go to the meadow and ride with my dad, uh, around, one round change and run another one ride the next time. It was my road, and I got the wrong side the more. And I cut my foot off. And my foot here come off, which is right by the, right by the arch. It, it come off and uh, was hanging by the sole of the foot. And my dad put his tourniquet on and the other kids ran home and told my mother. And we, we had horses and uh, this 1938. And uh, with this, uh, we got home, uh, got everything put away and got, us, got me to Grand Rapids, which is was 35 miles from where I was at. And got into the hospital and the doctor examined and she said, well, you're going to have to cut off the leg at the knee because there's only prosthesis or whatever they call them uh, otherwise, you know. And she says, can I just pray just for a minute? He says, of course. He says, of course you can. And she said, it just seems like everything just, just was calm. She says, just sew it on. Just sew it on. These are, these are country doctors, they're not surgeons. They're, they're just people that deliver babies out in the country. And so uh, she went in and the doctor says, you're going to lose your little girl, she's going to die. We have not, you know, we can't get infection, we can do nothing. I was a girl who went barefoot out on a farm. And uh, uh, face it, there's probably a lot of possibilities. And she said, no, she said, she said it's going to heal. Just, just just sew it on any way you can, just sew it on. And these two doctors, Dr. Joel and Dr. McKenna in uh, Grand Rapids, Minnesota, uh, were, didn't know what to do because you couldn't, they, you had to do what the parents said at those, in those days. And they, they went together and they spent time picking out bones and, and dirt and, and grass and all that stuff from my bone and they sewed it on. Two weeks later, I was home. It healed. I never had infection. I never had nothing. And I walked on it. I've walked on this this for 83 years, and I can walk probably better than some people. <laughs> so the Lord is good, and the Lord has been very good to me. And I got a good daughter too. That He's blessed me there too. <laughs> That's amazing, amazing. And Cora's in her 80s, but you'd never know it. She just goes strong as ever. Well, though, God is good, isn't he? Yeah. He loves every single one of us, and he has everything for our good in mind. I'd like to ask our musicians to come. Our closing song is always a song of invitation where those who want to renew their faith in the Lord can come and pray at the front. You're welcome to do that. Or if you'd like to come and share your story of faith to become a member of our church, share how you became a Christian and you'd like to follow the Lord in discipleship, you may do that. Or if you'd like to come and accept Christ as your Savior, I'd love to pray with you. Let us stand together as we sing our closing song. And anyone who is watching us on video is welcome to trust in Jesus just through prayer this morning. 
Jesus, I know that I need you as my Savior, and I receive you into my heart. Let us sing this song.